You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. All Things Home Care with your host, Dana Arnone. Listen as Dana focuses in on every aspect involved in maintaining loved ones in the home. She will also discuss the challenges and barriers in home health care. So please welcome the host of All Things Home Care, Dana Arnone. Hi, welcome to All Things Home Care with your host, Dane Arnone. I'm coming to you live with, from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we're coming to you live from the Westfield Massapequa Mall, where our home of Reliance Home Senior Services is located. So if anybody has any questions about home care, home services, come down to the Massapequa Westfield Mall and come say hi, and we can help you out as much as we can. Uh, today, I have my, uh, my my buddy and my best friend, who happens to be one of my employees as well, Danielle Solinaro. Uh, she's a guest today. Um talking about enrollment services with our patients coming on to service, not only with Reliance Home Senior Services, but also with any type of agency. Um, I don't think people realize sometimes that the process of getting involved with an agency is, is, a, is, is a lengthy one, especially if you're going through the Medicaid um, process. So Danielle is our enrollment specialist and intake manager, and she's the one who really is the, the face of Reliance, going out there, talking to families and creating those relationships. She's also the person that will talk to uh, families when they're calling up looking for help and service. Services. So, Danielle, I know you're here very reluctantly. <laughs> I am. You're, you're, you're more of the behind the scenes type of person. <laughs> that but is true. Um, I think that what you do and uh, for families that are maybe listening in and wanting to go through the process, it's an important part for them to understand. So we're going to talk about what Reliance does, but I know that for most agencies, the enrollment process would have to be similar, right? So you're out there talking to the nursing homes and the families about services in general, not just what Reliance does. So why don't you, I'm a family and I'm in a nursing, my mom's in a nursing home right now and is going to be looking for help when she comes home. And I'm going to call you up and I'm going to say, hi, Danielle, it's me, Dana. My mom's in blah, blah, nursing home. Uh, I need some help. So how does that talk track usually go for you? Well, one or two ways. I always ask uh, right up front if mom or dad has Medicaid. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have Medicaid, that starts a whole new open conversation to how it works. Right. And I'm going to say to you, I make too much money. My parents have too much money. I don't qualify for Medicaid. Everybody qualifies for Medicaid. Most people. You're right. So uh, how often do you hear someone saying, uh, my mom's not going to qualify? Almost everybody. Right. So mm-hmm. they're, so are they surprised when you say you can? Very much so. Okay. And um, uh, most families are under the assumption that um, there is a five-year look back for community Medicaid. Mm-hmm. And that is not true. Yeah, community no. Medicaid is a 30-day look back. So it's quite different from nursing home. Well, it's a 30-day look back if they have everything transferred. Correct. So you, do you go into that kind of thing with them as far as uh, – so let, let's let, we'll role play for a second. So okay. I have my mom. My mom is in mm-hmm. – I don't want to say what nursing home, but we both know which one I would be going to. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and uh, she's looking to discharge within the next week or so. So and the nursing – Yeah. So, well, if mom's coming home the next week or yeah. so. But the nursing home is telling me I need a live-in. So most people mm-hmm. um, do get told that. And – Why? Um – I'm not 100%. I couldn't actually answer that question. Well, how many people do you think if they say that they need a living actually do need a living? Very few. Right. So most people come home um, with without a living mm-hmm. and they'll try, they'll, they'll do the highest hours. So maybe they'll start off as a 12 hours, seven days. And then if necessary over time, they can cut it back. Um, but if it's necessary, they'll keep those hours. Or if it is necessary that they do have a living, then 
then we'll do that. Okay, so I'm calling you up and I'm saying my mom's being discharged and the nursing home is telling me that I need 24-hour care. Mm -hmm. What's the next type of uh, conversation? So the next step is is that um, I can come see you. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, you go see people? I do. I know that, but... (laughs) Yes, I can definitely come see you or the patient and... um, or we can just do this over the phone. Either way, um, we need to talk about then privately hiring. Mm-hmm. Um, we do charge $25 an hour. Mm-hmm. And within a day or two, we can have the, you know, we try to set the right person up mm-hmm. to go take care of the patient. So um, let me ask you. So if I if you're going to be talking to people about community Medicaid, mm-hmm. and I'm saying to you, mom makes too much money, mom has assets, dad has assets, what is it that you're telling them to help them understand that community Medicaid is something that is uh, approach. Uh, most people can qualify. So what is it most that you're telling Most people can you? qualify. It's just a matter of transfer. Mm-hmm. That's well, it. Transferring what? The assets. Okay. Either to a son or daughter or a brother or sister, whomever they want to transfer the assets to. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people out there, um, they... I've seen a lot of families that were privately hiring for a very long time and then they wind up at some point running out of money Mm -hmm. and they always call me when it's kind of too late when they have a thousand dollars in the bank account. So now, you know, they've been paying a bill for maybe five hundred thousand dollars and they have one week left. Medicaid does take some time. When you apply for community Medicaid, you have Medicaid requires that you there's a list of documents that you need to submit. And when you submit those documents, it's generally about four to six weeks right, to get so approved. But, yeah, right. So, but you you had said that most people qualify. Yeah. So they do. when in your job, and I mean, obviously, I already know all this, mm. but it's information. Yeah. So when when somebody comes to you and they say, "Oh, Danielle, I, oh, you're very expensive." <laughs> <laughs> and they say, I can't afford you. Um, and then what generally you tell them about community Medicaid, because I yes. hear you. Yes. We do commit. We do the applications here in the office. We, we, we charge a low rate compared to, I guess, Very low. people. Um, we do a lot of pro bono work. We do. So how do you decide who gets the Medicaid application for free? You're looking at me? Well, <laughs> you're the boss. You normally tell me. <laughs> well, what normally happens is if a patient has maybe a few thousand dollars in the bank, mm. we'll never take that no. last few thousand dollars. No. It will not happen. So we'll wind up taking that case for free. For We're doing it for free. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, so when they call up, and let's just pretend like I have assets. Mm-hmm. So what is it that you tell them to come in? They're going to meet with somebody here? Yeah. So we have two Medicaid filers here mm-hmm. um, at Reliance. And if the patient does have a lot lot of assets, then we, we can refer it out to an elder care attorney who we're partnered with. Right. So, and that's only for people that maybe have a lot of transfers. A lot of transfers. They have to protect the, their assets or put things into a trust because we don't do that here. Correct. We don't do trust. We do simple application. We should right. be very clear. We're not lawyers here. Um, you know, mm-hmm. the, the people doing the applications are not lawyers, although they've done them for a very long time. They're very well wor- versed in it. Um, Fran, who happens to be our administrator, actually does a lot of the Medicaid applications. Um, and uh, we've never been denied. Well, actually, that's a lie. I'm lying right now. We did have one. No, one. One. Who's the second one? Don't say the name. I think it was a long time ago. Oh, well, one. But and it, it actually wound up coming. No, it wasn't our fault. No. It wound up coming through. Yeah. But yeah. the one that's being denied now is because people don't think that the department's going to, they're not going to find their transfers mm-hmm. and they're not going to find money that they They will always place. find the They will money. always find always. it. And, you know, the problem is that people don't understand that it takes longer to... If you don't tell us what's going on, it's going to take you a long time because yes. we have to refile and refile and refile. Right. So um, right now, where I think we're refiling, what, the third time for this third guy? Time. Because they keep finding money. And it's not even a lot of money that they're finding. Well, the house was a lot of money. But yeah. the other things that came up, it wasn't uh, even a lot of minor. Mm-hmm. What? Or minor, but Yeah, minor, but denied. it still puts them over the threshold. Yeah. So the threshold is around $15,000 mm-hmm. for someone to have in liquid assets. Mm-hmm. You can have an IRA. Um, that's still fine. You can own a home. But what we tell people is you can own a home to apply for Medicaid and get accepted. But you should be doing the transfer or the protection of the home somewhere while you're on Medicaid or before yes. just so that if something happens while you're on services and that individual passes away, that asset of the house is protected. Correct. Because um, I have seen, uh, not with us, but people that I've talked to, that when um, – uh, they had a somebody had did a Medicaid application for their mom, and uh, they did it by themselves. Family did it; okay. they didn't go through a lawyer. Mm. And um, they got on services and blah, blah blah. Their mother was on services, I think, for like seven years, but they didn't transfer the house. Okay. Then what the happened? mom passes away, 
And then um, the the state went after the house, and they, they got it. They got it. They had to. I think it was like two hundred eighty thousand dollars that the the family had to give uh, back because they didn't protect the house. And they said that no one had told them. But I mean, it's logic. If you're gonna if you're gonna go on services, and the state's gonna pay for your care, and you have this large asset, it makes sense that they're gonna want their money back. Of course. So that's what happened to that family. Um, that was shame. someone. What? That's a shame. Well, it's a shame that they were misinformed, but they did the sure. application by themselves. That's why I say even if people are gonna do the application by themselves, they should at least get some. A support from an office or, or get some information. We sure. give information out all the time. So if someone wants to, to do it themselves, they can call up here and they can uh, ask us for the for the uh, information, the documentation to, that they would have to gather on behalf of their loved one. So Medicaid is something that we do here a lot. We're going to go into a little bit more about that when we come back from our commercial break. Well, this is All Things Home Care. I'm your host, Dana Arnone. And we're here with my BFF, Danielle Salinero. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to in radio. Hi, you welcome back to All Things Home Care with Dana Arnone, and I'm sitting here with Danielle Salonero, who is the intake manager for Reliance Home Senior Services. And one of the things that we wanted to talk to um, about today is really the onboarding of families and patients into an agency. I think that sometimes people. You know, we talk about this a lot here. We talk about, you know, we, we work so hard to get patients on service and give and match them up with the right home health aid. And then things happen and life goes on. So Danielle works very hard for a reliance and she kills herself every single day <laughs> trying to get things together um, and bring people on board. So, OK, so Danielle, so someone's going to call up moms in a nursing home coming home soon um, and they're going to apply for Medicaid now because you've talked them into the fact that they actually can apply for Medicaid and get on services. Right. So let's say they. They come in and let's say, are you reading your phone right now? No. Pay attention. I am. <laughs> So she's always working. See, she's on her phone <laughs> taking a new case right now as we're talking to her. Um, so they're they're coming in and they're going to apply for Medicaid. Yes. Okay. So they come in, they meet with Fran, they meet with Nick. The yes. process is going on. So we filed. Right. Around how long does it take? to? So once um, it's all submitted, um, it generally takes about four to six weeks. No problems. It's four to six weeks. From there, um, what happens is, <sighs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> no, so you're talking about it takes four to six weeks to get accepted. Correct. So people think that it's a funny thing because I think that people think that you. It's like a piece of paper. You take it to the post office. They accept, They get the piece of paper and whammo, you're in. Mm. And that's not true. Not true. At so all. people get. Uh, you know, we get yelled at a lot here too. Where's yes. my Medicaid? Where's my yes. Medicaid? So. The, it takes about four to six weeks if everything is filed correctly. So if they're not Correct. fibbing to us, right? If they're showing us everything, no denial. Because like we don't care what they have. I don't care if you transferred a million dollars. The state doesn't care. So why would I care? But we do 
care if they're not upfront with us because it just wastes time and, and, and it will delay them and cost them more money because if they're prior to paying already, correct. it's a huge setback. Correct. So four to six weeks, they get accepted. They're going to get an accepted letter. Yes. And people think that that means that Medicaid is paying for the service. And that's not true. No, it's not. Okay. So, so we still have time ahead of us. So what that means is now the next pr- step would be to call Maximus. Who's Ma- Maximus? That's a Medicaid state nurse that's going to come out and see mom or dad. Mm-hmm. And it's a lengthy evaluation, about three to three and a half hours. And they're there to determine, to determine whether the patient's approved for long-term care. Right. So long-term care by the state laws is anybody that requires care over 90 days. Correct. All right, right. So you help them. Uh, yes. Call, you, wait, you help set up Maximus? I You're guiding them through the Maximus? I can. Okay. Yes, I can help them, mm-hmm. you know, and guide them through that. We'll set the date. Oh, I have a question. Sure. Okay. So the other thing that people don't understand, and I think that if people are listening, which maybe two or three of them might be in the mm-hmm. process now, <laughs> when they're calling, when you're calling up to schedule Maximus, number one, accept the first appointment that they give you. They don't Absolutely. understand that the enrollment process is a, is a is a timed process. It is right. So you, I'm sure you tell that to people. I do when, when they call up, but they yes. really don't understand that because I hear you say all the time, "What you cancel that appointment for? Right. Don't do that." Yes. Because if you don't get it, in if the state does not come to evaluate you within a certain amount of time, and then the managed cares come in, in a certain amount of time, you're missing enrollment. It's like an insurance company. Exactly. So what happens is is that you once you're approved, and Maximus was there, you mm-hmm. have 75 days to pick a plan. Right, but it's in your best interest to pick a plan uh, it, <laughs> immediately. It's in your best interest to take the first available date that they give you, mm-hmm. rearrange your schedule to have that nurse come, mm-hmm. um, because you still then have some time ahead of you. I can, we can never guarantee when a nurse is going to come out through a managed care. Um, they do their be, own appointments. They, they do their own appointments. Mm-hmm. It could be a week from now, or it could be four weeks from now, and that could be a big setback in time. If, especially if you're privately paying um, and you really need to get on services. So what's wise is, is that you accept what's given on, um, right up front mm-hmm. and rearrange your schedule to be there. And we always ask a family member to be there as well with the patient. And the- Does it make a difference if a nurse is there representing the patient? Because I hear that all the time, that... Um, you know, oh, the lawyer, If what if the lawyer was there, I'd get more hours, or if no. I, what? I don't believe so. No. I, no, not at all. Um, I think once uh, the state nurse comes in and does the approval for long-term care, um, the the next step is the managed care to come out and send their nurse. They're there to determine how many hours and days the patient's approved for care. Mm-hmm. Well, then so, what's the purpose of Maximus? I'm, I'm sorry? What's the purpose of Maximus? To approve for long-term care. So, for an example, if mom or dad, let's just say, broke their ankle temporarily mm-hmm. and they're going to heal in a couple of weeks, you can't have long-term care. You won't get approved. Um, if this is, they're looking at patients that, for long-term. So, anyone in need, I think it's actually over, a hun- it's 120 days. Is it? I, I thought it was 90 so. days. You might be right, but I'm thinking it's 120. Oh, well, we'll, ha- we'll have to get a definitive Okay, so let's say that. 90 to 120 days okay, to be safe. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's say somewhere so within 90 to 120 needing days. care over that amount Well, let's of just time. say that anybody, like I had someone that called up a little while ago and they were like, mm-hmm. well, mom might be sick. Well, if mom's not sick right now, don't be applying mm-hmm. for Medicaid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does, you know, right. you, you apply. Sometimes people want it just for that what if. Like mom's 90 and I assume she's going to get sick eventually. So I want to have this uh, on the back burner. Right. But you can mom... actually have community Medicaid, though, um, and not receive home care services. There are You, you don't need to um, go on managed care. There's a lot of people that have community Medicaid for medications, for transportation, things like that. Um, and as long as they recertify, they can then stay on Medicaid. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's those people if they want the aid services that they have to qualify for that length of time. Right. Yeah. So what they're looking for when the nurses do come out from the managed care if is if the people can get through their daily activities. They're mm-hmm. looking to see if they can toilet themselves, bathe themselves, um, walk without assistance or with assistance, um, if they're a full risk, if they need help cooking, shopping, um, getting dressed. Can an aide drive a patient? They cannot. Well, drive. we don't allow it. We, Reliance Home Care, does not. Right. Um, and in my opinion, no agency, sh- no agency should. But um, the well, a lot of times we don't know what the aides are doing. That is, that is very true. That is. But I always have the conversation with the family that the aide is not to drive the patient and the patient's not to drive the aide. Because mm-hmm. it does cause 
issues if there is accidents that do come. A hundred percent. So what else? So um, the secondary step is having that managed care come out. When the managed care nurse does come out, um, she will do an assessment much shorter than the first one. It's about well, they're looking hour. at different things now. They are. They're looking at different things, and um, they're there to determine how many hours and days the patient's approved for home care. <laughs> so that's their job. The, the assessment nurse. The assessment right. nurse. So do you, what, what kind of hours are you seeing now? Like when you, since you started with us mm-hmm. since to today. It has you changed seen? significantly. Yeah. So when I first entered this, a lot of people um, were getting livings and very high hours, maybe 12 hours or 10 hours. Um, and that is no longer the case anymore. It has definitely changed. Yeah, we're going to talk about the changes in, in the uh, enrollment process when we come back. You're listening to All Things Home Care. I'm your host, Dana Arnon, and we're here with Danielle Salonero from Reliance Home Senior Services. We'll be right back. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it there are artists and then there's alice asmar this award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with american indians of the southwestern united states her book dance to the great spirit showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the pueblo indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com www www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. We're back with all things home care with Dane Arno and Danielle Salonaro. I'm with, I think I'm going to make this a weekly thing, Danielle, because I know you love this so much. I think I'm going to make you come on every Wednesday and be my guest. <laughs> um, I, I, the reason I really am torturing you right now, because I think that really people need to understand the, the complexities of an agency. Okay. You know, that's like my mission in life, <laughs> to yes. tell people how it works and why it works a certain way. So um, you were saying before how the, um, the managed kids have changed. Yes. And, and they've changed in the criteria or they changed in the hours? Like what's changed? Um, I think I can tell you my pay has changed. That's right. I know. Um, no, they've definitely changed in the hours. Um, I think some companies out in the world were giving away hours and days um, too loosely. Mm-hmm. And it affected everybody. Mm-hmm. So And they're no longer in business now. That is correct. Mm-hmm. So no we're talking about business. the Guild Nets and the North Shores. Those you can say. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wasn't going to mention And now, we, now you have United going out. So, um, you know, which is, those are all very big. They were huge players in the managed huge. care. So when, when giving those long hours, that's just something that we try to tell families up front. And pa- families either love us or hate us. Mm-hmm. They're either going to love us for our honesty or hate us for our honesty. Right. So um, because when we're talking to families, it's first of all, you know that I'm, I say this all the time. They're getting free services. Be, be grateful for what the state of New York is Very giving you. Grateful. Very grateful. So if you have to pay a little bit extra uh, for, for a little bit of additional hours, it's not so bad. So um, you're seeing that the families are getting sicker. I see this anyway. Mm-hmm. Patients are older, obviously. Mm-hmm. We hear it all the time. Uh, they're getting sicker. They're more complex. They have yeah. comorbidities, which means that there's multiple things going on with them. And they're getting less hours. 
That is correct. Right. So what are the family saying? They're yelling at you a lot. They are. Sometimes <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> and it's really not in the world. Um, but I always tell the families they have a couple of options. So one, they can move mom or dad in with them. Mm-hmm. They don't want that. Which they don't want to do. Nobody ever wants it. Nobody ever says yes to that, right? No. no. That it's super rare mm-hmm. if, if it was a yes. Um, the secondary option is to take what they've you know, get offered, offered mm-hmm. and take it and be happy mm-hmm. and make it work. Well, the thing that they're okay, get to, get to number three. And number three is that you can always attach a private pay to it. So if a patient, let's just say, um, needed a live in, but they were offered 10 hours, um, they can attach three more hours to make that a live in case. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they can actually um, utilize their pooled income trust monies to pay for the care, which people don't really understand that mm-hmm. whole thing also. But, um, you know, the thing that I always say to me is that, you know, when the state of I don't know about every other state. So what I'm going to say right now, there's no truth to what I'm about to say. Um, but I, I I'm assuming okay. and I'm usually I assume correctly, okay. um, especially like my family lives in Virginia. OK, they're not getting aid services. My father's 90. He's not qualifying for Medicaid. He can't qualify. Yeah, every state is very different. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's a state thing. So for a state in New York, like people get so angry. They paid into the system. There's a sense of entitlement, which is fine. And and I get that because everybody wants the best for their parents and their loved ones. That is true. But it, they have the, what people need to realize is that every patient is different. Mm-hmm. And it, they, they, the nurses that come out to do the evaluation, when they assess a patient, each patient's going to come up differently. So one patient may get 10 hours and the other patient down the block from them may get four hours. And that patient down the block that got four hours is very unhappy because their neighbor up front got 10 hours mm-hmm. and they can't understand why. Mm-hmm. So, but it goes by how, you know, if you're, if you score high, then you get high hours. If well, they have low, to realize that the forms or the, um, the <clears> criteria <throat> that the managed cares are utilizing mm-hmm. to assess the patient, mm-hmm. it's called, it's a UAS form and it's pretty right. standard. It's standard. Every managed care uses the same, mm-hmm. but you know what you get all the time. And I'm sure, um, if people listening, they, they see this, they, they figure, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have all the managed cares come in and see which one's going to give me the most hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they get the, you know, you do and that. I, yeah, but that's, well, I guess I would do the same thing. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I think two is fair. Mm-hmm. Um, three or four, I think is a bit excessive, mm-hmm. but 99% of the time they all offer around the same, around maybe the half same. an hour more, an hour maybe. more. It's never a live in versus four hours. Absolutely. Right. Not. So people never. have to understand that there's a, there's a, there's a formula that they're using to come mm-hmm. up with the, with the hours. But the other thing that I say all the time, and, and I even tell this to you guys in the office too, that if the state gave away to everything, everybody, the whole system's going to collapse. It would collapse. The, they're not going to be any, any care for any person. So we should be grateful for whatever they're giving us now. Um, sure. and, and then take it from there. And if you have to, you know, utilize some of your funds that you've obviously trans, Mm-hmm. That's my big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then so be it. So be it. Uh, uh, help your family out. Okay. I'm hoping that they go to that three year look back for community Medicaid. That's really like my health. I know you think I'm crazy. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I'd agree to that. There has to be some type of um, payment system for the families to help offset the care in the home. That's what the problem is right now. And and there's a lot. I feel bad for the 99 year old lady that really does need to live in yes. and, and only gets six hours a day. Absolutely. And, and I do, too. Yes. And that that is alone at home. And she does need to um, have assistance getting in bed at night. Yeah. And it's not there and it's not covered. I agree with you 100 percent. And, and it's funny because, or you see the people that, you know, the other thing that people say to you all the time, um, well, I hear you, is that they want eight hours a day. So they want four hours in the morning, they want four hours in the afternoon. Right. They want to split it. Right. And so mm-hmm. how does that go? That doesn't ever really pan <laughs> out because... The coordinators will hate you. They will punt. They already hate you. They already hate me, but... <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to hate you more. <laughs> um, the, it's the afternoon shift that's very hard to get someone to return to. Um, they struggle, the coordinators... To have right. someone come but the back other th- maybe from four to eight because a lot of times people are home by then. They want to feed their families. They're with mm-hmm. their kids. So it's it's a struggle. It the other thing is. that people have to realize, though, when they're talking about a split shift like that, mm-hmm. that um, you're talking about multiple people coming in and out of your house. Sure. No it's, aides can accept the morning and the afternoon every door. single day. So you're having at least four people in the house. Yeah. That's and too much. It's way too much. And too much. Most people with dementia or Alzheimer's really want 
a permanent person mm-hmm. and they want to see the same face so they're comfortable. Yeah. Well, we want that too. Sure. So when you, when you, cause I hear you talk sometimes when you're talking to families, if they accept the, let's say they get six hours a day. Um, and, uh, okay, we're going to talk about this when we get back because okay. actually my thought, remind me please. Cause you know, I'm going to forget what okay. I just said. Okay. What did I just say? Six hours. Six day. hours a day. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is all things home care with Dana Arnone. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. BBM Global Network. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Okay, so, Danielle, what did I just ask you to remind me? I don't six remember. Six hours, you said? What? Something about six hours? Six hours, right. Okay, so, thank you. So, if, if someone comes on to service and they tell you, no, they're not on service yet. I'm sorry. We're still in enrollment. So, they're, they're calling you up and they say, oh, my God, Danielle, you suck. Mm-hmm. I only got six hours a day. Right. What did you do to me? <laughs> you suck. My mother can't have six hours a day. I pay into the system for thousands of years. That's they're right. entitled to more. She needs a living. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Go. Again, <laughs> what do you my, say? my speech will be... Um, take well, the six hours. Take the six hours. See what happens. Yes. And then go and ask for an increase if it's necessary. And, right. And the patients do get um, assessed every six months. They do. If something happens in between, a nurse will come out from the managed care as well as Reliance mm-hmm. um, to, to uh, assess the patient. And if... There's more hours that is needed. It will be given. See, I think people don't real, don't understand that the managed cares are business, they right? Are. So if they, if, it's really actually, I'm not joking right now. It's very scary about the the Gildnets and the North Shores mm-hmm. and the United pulling out because um, they were giving the patients really what they needed. So now you're seeing these other companies coming in and they're managing the people because they're supposed to. That's mm-hmm. what the state wanted for them you know they wanted people to manage the care um and you're seeing that the patients are getting less hours so what we do here is um we try to help manage them at home as well. Mm-hmm. So one of the differences between Reliance is onboarding new patients, and I think other agencies, although maybe they do it, I don't think so, is when you're talking to them, um, now they have Medicaid and they're coming out to service, or yeah. now they're private pay and they're coming out to service. And they say, okay, Danielle, what happens next? Well, what happens, Danielle? So <laughs> once the patient's uh, approved, let's just No, no, say, no, let's say they're, they're let, oh, that's true. Okay, that's yeah, fine. That's they're fine. approved. They're they, approved. And let's just say for an example, they get... Uh, seven days, six hours, and everybody's mm-hmm. happy. So if um, the patient was seen before the 20th of that month, then they can see enrollment starting the first. Right. So all enrollments the first of the month. Correct. So all enrollments start the first of the month, Danielle, right? Correct. It doesn't matter when when it, when you're coming in, it's the first. <clears throat> that is correct. So, it, But you have to be enrolled or every, all the paperwork has to be done and, and sent in and finalized by the 20th. That they is. say the 20th, but I don't really think it's the 20th. It's definitely the 20th. Oh, it's not the 15th? 
No, it's the 20th. And then could something go Before wrong? Noon. Like that's another thing that I see that happens all the time now that things go wrong. They do go wrong. You think that they're getting enrolled and then they're not. That is correct. And then the families are really pissed. That's right. So <laughs> but it's not our fault. No, it, that's true. But just so people know in the world, um, when if they if they're doing a Medicaid application and mom and dad do make over eight sixty five, the um, excess money needs to be put into a pool trust, and it's super important that people do that. But we do that for them if we're doing the Medicaid. Right. And most lawyers do do that. But that's for people that are doing it by themselves. They don't understand right. that they have to set up that trust, that that's income correct. trust for overage. Right. Because if there's an overage <clears throat> and it wasn't taken care of, mm-hmm. then you will not see services starting the first. Right. It but will be people need to know, like, so the 865 is income. Correct. So they can keep $865 to do whatever they want with mm-hmm. anything over that. So if they make $4,000 a month, mm-hmm. well, that's too high. I don't want to do the math. <laughs> so if they make $4,000 a month, they can keep 865 Correct. The rest goes into this trust right. that the, that we have to set up for them. And that's where they pull from their bills. So, right. So they'll be, so they can still stay at home. They're still in essence, keeping that money, but it's going into a trust for, for bill paying. That's correct. Yeah. So I find that most people do have to set up a trust. I do too. Yeah. yeah. Most people don't make that less money, mm-hmm. especially now. You seem like around $2,000. But if they make $1,000, I tell people don't bother setting up the trust because the trust is going to cost you money to, to, to serve every month. Yeah. So what's it's the point of saving 50 bucks? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe somebody will. I, I have no idea. But so the enrollment the first of the month, if the trust is set up, everything is good. They're going to get enrolled the first of the month and they just come on services with us. Whammo, bammo. That's good. And you did your job really well, Danielle. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. So we need about 20 of them. Okay. Okay. Get out get there. What are you doing on the radio? Get out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. So um, we have to learn how to teach those home health aides to take care of that person. Um, we have to teach the families that they need to be involved. You can't just say, okay, agency is your problem. Good luck. I'll see you next month. That's right. Um, and whatever happens in the house, that's, that's your fault and it's up to you because that's not the way that it is. I mean, it is the way that it is, but it shouldn't be. So what we try to do here is we really try to create a team effort in taking care of that patient. Mm-hmm. We um, That's why we brought in social work because um, you know, I always, uh, I'm a nurse, but my mind always goes social work because, you know, you can take care of someone medically, but if they have social issues or environmental issues or depression issues, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what's happening medically. That other stuff is going to, it's going to uh, cause a problem. There. It'll right. be there and it's always an issue. So I, I thought we're going to be taking, um, you know, we do this out of our own pocket. So, cause it's not something that's reimbursable through mm-hmm. anybody. So I want that known right now that we send out a social worker just to get a, a quick psychosocial, get a baseline of what's going on in the house. Do they have food? Do they have shelter that's good? Um, is there money problems? Uh, can Do they need maybe a, a food stamp application or a SNAP application? Can they? Do they have air conditioning? You know, nurses, we, we look at that, but really social workers are looking at that. The other thing that um, we want the social worker to look at when they go in is uh, any type of behavioral issues or depression or issues with dementia. So they do have the ability or we have the ability. We work with a, a company that um, will go in and work with the families um, under a, a medication Medicare uh, and bill Medicare separately for services uh, for any type of behavioral health or depression issues. So that's something that we look at because that really is a big component of keeping people home. The other thing is when our nurses are going in doing the start of care, they're looking at the skilled side of the patient. So mm-hmm. if someone's a little wobbly or someone says, oh, you look at my legs, they're very swollen mm-hmm. or I'm having difficulty breathing or um, if they even if they need like equipment in the house, that's something that our nurses are going to assess for. And we can set up child services, a child meaning a home care. That was actually who was supposed to be here today. And I messed that date up. So I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to have a child. We're going to talk to a few chars over the next few weeks as well, because those are the people that are coming in billing the insurance is for short-term uh, care in the home, nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. So that's something that is very important. I don't think a lot of agencies are making those referrals. So I we do that so every day. Yeah, without, every day. I think it's wise. What? It helps for everybody. It helps on our side. Yes. And the on well, side. The, well, it keeps the people home. And, you know, uh, it's not going to solve all their issues, but I think that we're trying to resolve some of the issues. And mm-hmm. I think that we take that extra step when we're onboarding new patients. The um, other thing that we're going to be doing here, because what's one of our biggest problems, Danya, other than me. Oh. What? Um, is there too many problems that you can remember? <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, the only other problem I see is maybe um, if, if it was up to me, because I sit in this chair every day and mm-hmm. I see the time frame, the, it's, I, I hope one day that it changes. What? And I hope that 
someday. The, that enro- the enrollment process? The enrollment process does change in time. Why? It's getting worse. What are you talking in about? My, in my opinion, I, I don't agree with a three or four month wait for a patient to receive a home health aid at home to take care of them, especially if they don't have money. They don't have someone to take care of them at home, whether it be a family member or a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think it's a little unfair mm-hmm. to have a person wait that amount of time to receive home care. Well, it wasn't always that way, though. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure they get so many applications mm-hmm. that come in that they just can't keep up. But that's why if there was a look back uh, and you really didn't do any transfers, you're going to be able to get on services faster if they do it differently. We're, we're going to talk about that when we come back from this break, okay? You're listening to All Things Home Care uh, with Dana Arnone. We're coming to you live from Westfield Mall, our home in the mall. Uh, so come down and visit us. We'll be right back. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit astrologyconsultants.com or call or email her at 808 526 1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. We're back with all things home care. Um, so, Danielle, what were we talking about? You were talking about you didn't think it's fair for people. I do. I, I just don't think that length of time is fair for mm-hmm. someone to um, receive home care. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the system is uh, broken, and it kind of is uh, it's sad, though. But that's why if somebody has – well, I shouldn't say this because then it's going to be wrong, to, but it's true. If someone's in, in need of services um, and there's a skilled need to them, mm-hmm. so they need some physical therapy, nursing, whatever the case may be, you know, Medicare will cover short-term aid services. So that's something that we do a lot here, too, is we'll bridge the gap for people. Mm -hmm. Um, Or if someone is uh, private hiring and they're going to be having, um, you know, home care services in place from a Medicare uh, child, you know, we can piggyback off of them and extend their hours so that they don't have to pay for all of it. So, you know, there are relationships that we have with people, um, agencies that will help offset some of the private hire um, aspect of things. That's true. That is true. That is true. Okay, Danya. And we've been working very well with them as well. So yes. That's, it's been nice. No. Yeah. yeah. More, some more than others. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> so. But other than that, what I was saying is what is the biggest problem that you see um, with people uh, with enrollment uh, or once they come onto service and people yell at you a lot? First of all, people shouldn't yell. Well, people shouldn't yell. Yes. It is a free service that they're, they are getting. Mm-hmm. So sometimes. And you're kind. I am. You're patient. I am very patient. You're empathetic. I'm kind. Yes. You're everything I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to be the, the strong one, Danielle. That is true. We can't that all is, sit here yes. and cry with people. That is very true. Um, <laughs> I get a lot of complaints about from families mm-hmm. about language. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately... Um, you know, 
They have accents. They have accents. There's nothing we can do about that. Mm-hmm. Well, we're trying though. Like what we do, what what we try to do here is, um, I hope one day while I'm still alive, mm. uh, that we see a shift in the people that enter into the care of home, uh, mm. uh, the role of being a home health aide. Because I say this on probably every show, and I'll say this until I I'm not here anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you don't want that to be for a long time, mm. so I'll try to stick. Very long time. Okay. Um, that uh, you know the the job itself as being a home health aide is is a good job. They get paid well. They have flexible hours. They can work as many or as little, well, not over 40, (laughs) but they can work as many hours as they want, as little as they want. Um, But the problem is, is right now it is an industry that is uh, dictated by um, immigrants. um, And they do come to us a lot of the times and they have accents. And most agencies... um experience the same thing yeah well it's not one over the other it's no. not like they're coming to you know that we're getting different people right. we say that to everybody all the time it's it's i always say it's the way the agency handles the problem it's not necessarily the aides because they're going to leave here go to 15 other agencies exactly. so um but the way the agency will conduct themselves is what sets you apart but families have to be real realistic, realistic. that they're not going to speak like you they are not. They are not. They're not. Well, it's maybe some. Not all. Let's just say it that yeah. way. But like we had an instance over the weekend that that you, I think that really was eye opening for you, mm-hmm. right? When the Very family eye-opening. calls you at eight o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. yelling on Saturday morning That's that right. they that they're all mad about the aides' language skills and blo- and other things. But that was the primary reason for their their yelling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then what did we do? We brought the aide in. We did, and I she, was surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, with sitting with her, she spoke, in my opinion, very well. Mm-hmm. And if I can understand her, then anyone out there should understand her. Well, that's what I say. Like, I if I can second language, no, that's yeah. me too. We're mm-hmm. English. Yeah, we're yeah. English. We're, 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 and um, I had no problem understanding her. Um, but the family, you know, was upset because she had a, a slight accent, and. It was unfortunate because that family actually lost a very good aide, Mm -hmm. even though um, she had an accent. Mm -hmm. And she was actually showed up to her job early. Mm -hmm. And because she showed up early, the family invited her in and, um, you know, asked her to go to work a little bit before her schedule. And they were upset because um, she declined and she was going to wait for her time, um, her shift and then start working. Mm -hmm. So a small minor problem as that grew to this giant forest fire Mm -hmm. uh, for no reason. Mm -hmm. And it was unfortunate because the aides that were scheduled for this case were were fantastic. Mm -hmm. They were very good aides. And I still wish the family the best. I hope they don't struggle. But they have to, you know, most families should realize that a lot of times when they get sent somebody, 99% of the time, it's a fit. There's that 1% that it, it... for whatever reason, and there could be many, that the aid's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And but what do I say to people all the time? It's like we're, we're we're dating right now. That's right. We're not married. That's right. We're not dating. Yet. So, so we're we're, we're doing that. Time. Yes. Yeah. And we're getting to know each other. That's right. Let the aides get to know your pa- your family. Mm-hmm. I, you know what I said because the family that you're talking about, I spoke to them and I said to them, you know, how would you feel if you had an accent, mm-hmm. right? And you're a home health aide, mm-hmm. and you already feel a certain way, mm-hmm. and you're going to someone's home, mm-hmm. right? And you're welcome you're told to come in and now you're uncomfortable because the tone of this family was a little harsh to begin with. So now you're feeling, Oh, like they're telling you start working and you know, it's not your time to start working. Mm-hmm. You know that it's nine o'clock and it's right. now eight thirty. Um, and the family goes from zero to 50 in front of you mm-hmm. and then tells you to get out. Super unfortunate. Terrible. Awful. So when you, when that's what I'm saying, the families is that you have to give them time. You have to. And in and, and that moment, all that family had to do is call the on call. That's it. And just say, hey, listen, she's in the house. She's not. And explain. And the miscommunication would have went away. It's right. a simple phone call. So um, that's one of the things that I think that, that that is a big problem with families. And what we're trying to do here um, is we, we did it before, but now we're going to change the way we do it a little bit because uh, people say that they can't come in. So we're going to start webinars with families. Uh, so all that's new families idea. coming in, mm-hmm. um, or even if they're on service right now, but usually like all the new families, we want to set the expectation of home care from the start. So they have to know that they're not going to get um, somebody who speaks perfect English in their home. They're not going to get the person that knows how to, to cook their meals the way they want it. 
they're going to have to learn and it's going to have to take time. Yeah. Um, it's you know, an it's, adjustment for everybody. Yeah. Especially if they're new to services. Um, yeah, well, this family's not new to services, though. Well, I, I'm just saying for the families that are new to services and they haven't had a home health aid in their house. It's awkward. It's it's a, it's an adjustment mm-hmm. for, for the kids, for mom, dad, uh, the dog, everybody. Mm-hmm. So You have a stranger in your home. There's a stranger in That's your about house. to um, be intimate, you know, that's bathing, right. dressing, toileting, yes. uh, diapering, and, mm-hmm. and it's uncomfortable. But I think instead of people welcoming them in and showing them this, the, the here's the pots and pans and here's how you yes. make the coffee, it's they automatically think that they know what to do and it's right. like osmosis. They know your family and they know right. what to do and they know where your coffee pot is and, and that's not that's the case. That's not the case. So no. I always... I always tell the families, uh, the more you're up front with um, what the patient needs, the better off you're going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, they, If you know they like scrambled eggs, mm-hmm. then you tell them you like scrambled eggs. Yeah, but sometimes show them how to make the scrambled eggs, well, too. That, that actually too. just came yeah. up. Um, so we're going to talk about that real quick when we come back from this break. Uh, you're listening to All Things Home Care um, with Dane Arnone, and we'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. We're back with our All Things Home Care with Dana Arnone and my guest, Danielle Salinaro. And we're talking about enrollment and onboarding uh, onto an agency and the expectations of families. And one of the things that we're going to try to do a little different here, differently here, um, because we do invest a lot of time in our families. Um, we invest a lot of time getting them uh, onto services and to find them the right caretakers in the home. Uh, sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we piss people off. Mm. I piss them off a little bit more than others. Uh, but we, we, we do try try very hard. So I think what happens is that people have an unrealistic expectation of who's coming to their home to care for their loved ones. Um, and that sounds like a negative thing and it sounds bad. I don't mean it that way. I mean that they, these people go to school to be caretakers and home health aides, but they don't know American, a lot of them, some do, some don't. Not everybody's going to know how to cook American food. Not everybody's going to know how to speak sure. the language perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as they, but they do come with the heart, uh, you know, to do the job. And you know, I do agree with some families when they say, you know, how is my mother going to communicate with them if they don't speak English? And we try very hard to um, not place those people. Um, but what we also try to do is teach them English. You know, that's one thing that's missing as well is the investment in the home health aid. I think that we invest very much into our home health aids. Uh, we have weekly in services and teaching here, so we really try to um, up the game and the level of who's caring for people out there. Um, because I say, you know, to myself all the time, like if I don't think that they're going to be able to care for somebody, we don't want them representing us. Number one. And number two, I don't want anybody to get hurt. That is true. That's true. That Wake up, true. Danielle. No, that's true. I'm thinking, <laughs> but I do, I just want to share that. So I personally got to experience Reliance Home Senior Service, whole, uh, a home health aide taking care of my uncle. Oh, that's right. I forgot yes. about that. And um, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't know if he'd want that or not. But he, my uncle um, was going into hospice and he uh, they, he hired our company. 
um, his family and the aide that was taking care of him spoke four different languages, but none well. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, he couldn't have been a better aide. Mm -hmm. Um, although he didn't have the language a hundred percent, um, he, he was one of the best caretakers a person could possibly ask for. See, and I think that sometimes people don't really give them the opportunity, and that's actually mm-hmm. not a fair thing. Um, although, but I have to say, like, I, I do understand people's point is when they say, you know, if they can't speak the English, how can they ca- take care of my mother? Or they, how do they, you know, communicate so they can't really have conversations and it's lonely? Um, so, I, I, but you know what it is we found over time? It all depends on the family. Some, pa- some families are a little bit more accepting of languages than, than others. There's some Correct. some families are a little bit more accepting on uh, guiding an aid, you know, as far as their cooking needs or their bathroom needs or their mm-hmm. bedtime needs. Mm-hmm. You know, no one's going to walk in and, and say, I can take care of you from head to toe. And I got this without any you know help and direction. Sure. They need to be dry. And that's another thing that we talked about, too, is that, um, you know, this is one of the only jobs. Well, I don't know, maybe there's other jobs, but for me, um, that an aide goes out there and is dealing with the family and there's minimal oversight. Basically, that it's the aid true. and the and the patient. Yeah. And if there's family, they're blessed. If there's no family, then basically it's the aid and the patient. So we really try to oversee them as much as we can. We send supervisors out all we the do. time. Yes. We send mentors out all the time. So we have a mentorship program for our aides. We bring them into the office. They probably don't like it, but we bring them in once a week. All different aides to give them instruction. Today, they're doing diabetes and congestive heart failure. So we're really trying to teach them how to you know physically care for people. Um, and the language will come in time, too. And our next thing is going to be... I so I think I told you we're going to do cooking. Yes. You told me that this I morning. Know. I do want them to do It's a great that. idea. Yeah. Well, we're going to try. Well, I can't teach it, though. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I couldn't teach them how to cook. Fran wants to teach them. Oh, she does. Okay. Yeah. But, but simple things. Mm. Pasta. Yeah. You know, toast. Mm. You know, I had a, I, I was telling, I forgot if I was telling the story before, but I had a Filipino weed one time that was with a family and the family called up screaming their head off because the, the, the um, aid was boiling the chicken. And I guess because Filipinos boil chicken, I don't know. Mm. I don't boil chicken. I don't, I, boil chicken. I don't even know how to. But I, I still, if I was, I don't know. If, unless someone says, make my chicken this way, I, they're right. going to make it the way that they it, know. Try it. There's yeah. multiple ways to do it. So I, I think it's more of an education and it's more like a, a part of that onboarding as well. Mm. You know, when you're onboarding a family and you're onboarding a patient, you're telling them this is what to expect and this is what's going to happen. And we're going to do our best to make you your family safe and secure. But we need you. We need your help as well. We need you as a partner in the caring of yes. your loved one. Everybody. It's a team effort. It is a team effort. And I don't think that's too much to ask for. Definitely not. But. Well, you do a great job, Danielle. Thank you, Dana. And I, I'll expect you here next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Um, I might be busy. But oh, no, you're going to be here. <laughs> okay. I thank you very much. So you're listening to All Things Home Care with Dana and Hone. We're coming live from Westfield Mall in Massapequa, where this is our home and our agency. So come down and visit us anytime. Our door is always open. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been All Things Home Care with Dana Arnone. Join the conversation as Dana provides important information on how to make home care better for families and caretakers right here on All Things Home Care. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.